Once you've got one reference face, getting the other face parallel is really kind of easy. It doesn't require following any of the same techniques or using straight edges or winding sticks. I basically use a gauge to mark in a layout line. Then I use a four plane to cut a chamfer right down to that layout line. Then using a pencil or a lumber crayon, I come in and I create these little lines along the chamfers. A lot of people call those china marks. Now, as I plane on this surface, I can very clearly see this raised panel effect I've got going on here. And as I lower this center surface down, these china marks get shorter and shorter and shorter. And it's a really easy way to actually quickly see the topography of your board. For instance, down here at the end, I'm much closer to my line because I've got a short chamfer. In the middle of the board, I've got a much wider chamfer. So this section has more thickness than it needs to be done. Likewise, down on the far end, I'm almost at my line. I've just got a little tiny chamfer right here. So I know that when I plane, I need to focus the most right here in the middle with a little amount, the least amount, right down here. And I can very easily see exactly what I have to remove, exactly what I need to leave alone. working, obviously to make sure that I'm not creating a bow across the surface, and then I'm evenly taking passes overlapping across the board. Otherwise, if you take too much, focus too much on these china marks, if you look down here, I have a bit of a bow forming. So just because you reach those lines doesn't necessarily mean your board is totally flat. Focus on taking a pass, coming back and taking one next to it, kind of overlapping half the pass and just systematically working your way across the board that way. Soon enough, these little marks are gonna disappear and you will have a nice flat board with a parallel face to your reference face. 